All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here and uh, inviting us. It's really, really great to be, to be here. Um, my name is Mate Guyash. I, uh, I work uh, as a partner and a trainer at DataPower or consultant. And uh, before that, I was a uh, co-founder and CEO in a Hungarian startup called Embrightly. And I have some uh, connection to, to Vienna because our investors uh, are from Vienna, uh, Speed Invest. So uh, actually, I was, I was here uh, for a lot of times. M mostly good experience. Uh, so what I'm going to so talk about in the next 30 minutes is that I wanted to write State of the Union, but I realized Hungary is, is not a union as the United States, so I just wrote State of Data at Budapest. But what I really want to talk about is, is uh, what data-related community we have in uh, Budapest, what kind of companies we have, and um, uh, what, what I think will happen in the next few years, and I will state that again, but it's not just my ideas. I actually talked more than 20 people in the last few months uh, to, to create this presentation and to, to have some kind of overview of what's happening in, in, in Budapest. So I will s s tell you some numbers, but to compare to that something, I wrote the population of Budapest, which is 1.7 million people. Uh, it feels way more when you go to work at the morning, but <laughs> it's officially just 1.7 million people. It's the 14th biggest uh, city in Europe, and it's hard to beat London and Paris, but it's pretty, pretty well, pretty good in, in terms of order. Hungary is actually really capital heavy, so you know, the whole country have like 10 million people. And we are really good in like public transportation, so almost, almost 47 people uh, person. But we're not the first because that's Vienna, actually, with almost 50% choosing public transportation to, to get to work. And uh, yeah, so those are the origin numbers. And uh, we have, a, we have a, a lot of conferences compared to, the, compared to the population or to the community, and we're really proud of that. So the first thing that I think is really important about Budapest is that conference-wise, I think it's really strong. So, this is Crunch, and this is the venue for Crunch. This is an old, uh, old train station. And Crunch is, is one of the top data conferences in Europe. I, uh, I, I, I had to do one search, and it was somewhere in the web page, so it's pretty much true. But it's really a top-notch conference with presenta presentations from, from Netflix, Google, Yahoo, so all the big companies. And um, we're really proud of that. And the oldest. Uh, conferences are BI Forum and Data Forum, and they are special because I think this is the like fif 15 years each year it was held. So it's a pretty old conference. It started as a data warehouse conference because 15 years ago we, it was data, it was a data warehouse and uh, it wasn't data science. We call data mining, which is pretty much the same, but we have a new name now. <laughs> and not just uh, and. And like Big Data Universe, which is a free uh, conference, so I assume this is the most populous one. Uh, but it's good because the problem with this conference is even though like Crunch is, is one of the best conferences in Europe, but also still a very cheap one, it's still not for free and students, uh, people at university. Uh, it's just, it's just hard to get the, to get a ticket for them. So it, this is a good one because we even have free conferences and it's still really good. The keynote this year was from Netflix, I think, in Big Data Universe. And it's a free conference, which is a pretty good thing. So conference is a really strong thing in, in Hungary, but not just conferences, meetups too. And uh, I wanted to show you some numbers. And unfortunately, meetup.com has an API, so I could just get some numbers. And we have 31 are uh, data-related meetups. The total number of meetups in Budapest is uh, almost 600. Um, but of course, you know, it's a power distribution, so many, many meetups has only like two members, which is <laughs> a really private meetup. Uh, the distribution is, is this one. It's, I hope you can see this. The most populous is the, is the data science meetup, which is absolutely not as cool as this one, but <laughs> it's still really good. It has uh, almost 2,700 2, um, uh, members. Our most. Much, much more than us. Sorry? <laughs> much, much more than us. Yes, but not such a cool audience. <laughs> so, uh, and our, our most popular uh, meetup was had a few months ago, which was deep learning. <laughs> Um, so we have a lot of meetups, actually, and 
the total number of memberships among these meetups is 5,300, but that's not the unique users. So I know I'm a member of a few meetups um, or organizer. So I actually went through the unique numbers, and that's 2,700, I think. So that's the number of people who actually sacrifice their free time and, and go and uh, do this uh, meetup format. The ratings are pretty good, which means for me that only the people who enjoy the meetups actually do the rating. <laughs> and this is the, and if you go, if, if you go uh, right, then uh, this is the number of members. So actually there is a correlation, a really weak but correlation that bigger meetups are not that uh, well rated. And I don't remember which was this chart. So I'm just going to go down that how, how, how international we are. These are the cities that the members stated on their, on their, on their info side. So, I mean, not surprisingly, Budapest is the most populous one, but um, oh, it's ordered. So London is the second most, uh, most uh, stated city, which is, which is not surprising if, because in Hungary there's a saying that the second biggest uh, city uh, if in Hungary is London because of the so many Hungarians working in London, which might change in a few years, as we know. But <laughs> And, and the third one is actually interesting. It's a very small town, but they have a meetup, and it's called ABBA. So, yeah, and of course, it's really international. So we have from Menlo Park and something, or someone, yeah. So these are the meetups, and the meetup, meetup scheme is, scene is actually really strong, and not just by these numbers, but almost any day or all, in two times a week, you can go to a meetup and have some kind of data-related uh, meetup. And the interesting thing is that in, in, in Budapest, and I will talk about it, we have a huge problem with labor shortage. So companies try to do employer branding and they try to show themselves to, to, to people. So try, uh, finding a venue or a sponsor is actually amazingly easy. So I think the, the, the hardest time that I, I, when I faced trying to find a venue for a meetup uh, like five hours before the meeting, before the meetup was like I had to do three calls. And then someone, someone called me that I heard you need the place. You can come to us. And they are sponsoring with pizza and beer. So actually, the meetup scene is also very strong because find, try, finding uh, sponsors and venue is extremely easy. The harder, hardest, harder part is finding uh, good presentations. So yeah, the meetups are really amazing. And this, this creates a very vibrant community because we are in the conferences, we have free conferences, and the meetups we meet. So actually, we, we, we talk a lot, which helps, which helps uh, in, in your everyday work, because you, we, a lot of times you just get together, have beers from different companies, and they just tell us our problems. And we don't even have to sign an NDA to do that. Going over to education, uh, I think we have three layers, kind of. We have the universities, and three notable universities. This is the technical, techn University of Technology and Economics in Budapest. I graduated from, from, from here. I, I also teach at this university. Uh, Central European University, Zoltan teaches there. And the Utwesh Laurent University, which is uh, very strong in, 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 in mathematics, and, and a lot of people in data science comes from, from this university. If you ask me, my university is the best, but <laughs> someone told me I'm not really objective about this. An interesting thing is that, you know, we, uh, when, when you try to see what kind of courses we have in data science or data analytics in, in like five years ago, you saw, of course, we had the universities and we have low level tech, uh, tech courses. So, that, like courses that had Python course, had a Spark, Hadoop course. And this two uh, institute, they, it, they are focusing on management, high level management, so uh, really C level um, uh, operational. And uh, in the last two years, they, they became really popular because big enterprises send their management to these, these companies and they are teaching digital transformation, data science. So uh, we also teach at these, you know, at these institutes. And I had to teach Python for for CEO of a big Hungarian corporation, and, and he was there doing Python programming. And he actually liked it. He was a nice guy. So, uh, so what we have now in Budapest, and it's recent, it's last, last few years, is that 
the whole digital transformation started in big enterprises and now even high management goes to these courses and, uh, and they, they learn how they can use, use data. And um, that's, a, that's a very interesting thing because it, I hope that this will bring some big impact on how big enterprises like do these transformational projects where we have data analytics, we have automation and stuff. So it's, that's, that's a new thing. And also we have um, technology focused courses. So data power is one, that was just the original size of the logo. So nothing to do with, <laughs> with me doing the biggest, biggest logo. And these other companies are also doing tech courses. So for engineers, for data analytics, data analytics. Um, and I want to talk about the, the, the people, so you know, the, the data scientists, the analysts, the data engineers. And I wanted to give you some very broad overview on what kind of roles they fill. And I think there are three big ch chunks of, of the structures. The biggest one is, uh, if this is the one, they, this is the, so this is the whole, right, 100%. So like 60 or 70%, I categorize them as data analysts and they are, uh, they're com usually coming from the data warehousing where they're doing reportings. Usually they work with SQL or are using SPSS or uh, those, those um, uh, software. They're, they're not doing ML, so machine learning. And they are, they are the most numerous part. So the important, uh, the important role of this, this whole foundation is that, as you will see, we have the other roles here. They are transforming <coughs> the, to, to data scientists to doing AMA. So we have a huge amount of people still doing reporting and doing uh, that kind of work who actually is in, on, their, on the meetups, who are coming to the conferences and they want to do the, the cool job doing AMA, using big data uh, tools, and they are converting rapidly. The other part is data engineers, and as you will see in the company's part, if I have to say, Budapest is definitely not a data science city, it's a data engineer city. So we have a lot of data engineers and you will see in the companies that we have in Budapest, why it's that. So the data engineer is a huge part and the data scientist, I mean, if you come to a meetup, you see everyone's doing deep learning in Budapest, or everyone's doing machine learning. Actually, <laughs> that's a really, really uh, small um, uh, like part of the whole community who actually works on, on machine learning. I, I say it's like 5%. And I call data scientists who are working with Python, low level attack, who is good in with statistics and actually doing modeling, uh, modeling and stuff. So this is the, the structure. And who knows Kaggle? Okay, then my presentation will be three minutes shorter because I thought no one knew Kaggle. <laughs> So Kaggle is a, is, a, is a data science competition platform. So you have uh, projects and you, do comp comp you compete. And I tried to find the, the, the country leaderboard and I couldn't find, but we were very proud because at some point Hungary was the fourth country in the leaderboard. So uh, these are, in Kaggle every year, Kaggle does a survey, which many companies do now, like uh, Stack Overflow and stuff. So Kaggle did a survey and I filtered the data to just Hungary and I had 60 responses. So I wouldn't say this is like covers the whole ground, but it gives you a very good idea. So this is the age. The median is uh, 28, which is absolutely not interesting. Uh, the roles that they fill is more interesting. So like many people uh, state data scientist, and I think this is, this is the part which is just, I think it's not true. People like to call data scientists, but many people don't truly really fill this role in their everyday works. The question was that, what's your uh, professional role in the company that you work for? And the interesting thing when I asked someone that, do you think that this is not true? Do you think just people actually call themselves data scientists, but they don't do that? Uh, he told me that actually they, they are called data scientists in companies because what happens is that most, many companies say, oh, we are hiring data scientists and when when the, someone goes there and says, okay, what do you need me to do as a data scientist? I need you to write SQL queries, but fast SQL queries. <laughs> so many companies call data scientists the work that was categorized as data analyst because it just helps with the hiring. And as you will see, we have some problem with hiring. And the other is interesting. That's, uh, I just, I don't know what I do. And data analyst, which is what I kind of told you that that's, I think this is the reporting part. And we have a very heavy academic background in the profession. So, I mean, I don't even, I don't think I have to say anything. Like, that's really, that's really, 
But I think this will change in, in, in the future. All right, and the other thing is what I like to, to go through is the companies, and why is that? I mean, I don't want to do free marketing, but, but you know, what, when you go to Hungary and say what people do in this whole data analytics uh, scene, it's actually the thing that they do is what the companies do where they work. So most people don't do side projects and stuff. So it's, I think it's, it's really interesting to go through the companies because that's, kind of, that's the thing that, 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 that creates the project, or that's, that's, how they, that's what the people work on. And I'd like to structure what kind of companies we have in, in Budapest. I think well, the first is data startups. So these are the, in the recent years, we had a lot of startups who has uh, who, who has some data analytics in the core product. So it's not just some SaaS where they have an analytical team, but actual startups that has a core data analytics product. The other one is de uh, development centers. And uh, these are the companies who are doing some data product. Uh, one example is like Cloudera, who, who is very data focused because they are a Hadoop distribution. And they have develop center, development centers in, in Budapest. So the other big part of the companies who are having development centers in Budapest. There are big companies with, with data teams, but not necessarily data products. So, I, so uh, Ericsson is a good example. They have a huge data team in Hungary, in Budapest, but Ericsson is not a data company. And Hungarian enterprises, this is, these are a favorite. These are the old fashioned Hungarian enterprises who are now moving to data analytics by digital transformation. So like Mol, which is the which is the Hungarian oil company. It's the biggest Hungarian company. They, have, uh, they, they own Slovnaft. They have uh, petrol stations in Slovenia or Slovakia. Slovakia, I think. And don't travel a lot. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know that. <laughs> Sometimes I go on Google Maps. Oh, oh yeah, I'm totally sorry. So, but I don't know which one more, uh, more is there. But it's a, it's the biggest company, and like they are doing some big data pro data projects now, and consultancies like ourselves who 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 are doing some data related consultancy or 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 teaching. Or. So let's see a few companies, and I think this shows you some idea of what kind of works uh, we do in uh, Budapest. So one of the companies is Cloudera, and uh, they're the market leader Hadoop distribution. So if uh, um, if you ever use any Hadoop at companies, it's likely that you use Cloudera. They came to Hungary a few years ago, and they, they initially they started as a, as a, a, a support team. So they brought the support part to, to Budapest, which is, which is important, but you know, it's, not, it's not the best kind of jobs uh, to, do, to do Jira tickets uh, eight, hours a year, eight hours a day, eight hours a year. They pay pretty well. <laughs> But, you know, but now we have development, and most of the components in the current Caldera distribution is actually made in, in, in Budapest. So Spark, the Spark development is now migrating to Budapest. So actually Caldera is hiring Spark de, Sp uh, developers for the Spark team. Uh, the Spark uh, development will happen in, inside Caldera at Budapest, and I think it's San Francisco, I hope, but two cities. But Kafka, we have a Kafka team, Zookeeper, HDFS is almost exclusively developed at uh, Budapest. Yarn, uh, now they're also hiring people, so you're interested in Yarn. Maybe you should give a call to Cloudera. Uh, oh, and by the way, Budapest is really close. We have a highway, so it's basically, basically just, a, <laughs> it's just a left turn, right turn, 250 kilometers, and then a left, and the Cloudera office. So, and Uzi, Scoop, Flume, Crunch, Madis, all uh, developed the uh, they're all developing in, in Budapest. So I asked Cloudera that, is it fair to say that uh, in one year, the whole Cloudera distribution, we can say that is made in Hungary stamp? And he said they won't do that, but you can say that. <laughs> so we are really, and they are, they are expanding rapidly. So now they have <coughs> 200 engineers, I think, and they want to move to over 350 something. Uh, oh yeah, and some formats. Hortonworks is another, another company, and when I talked to them, they, also, they agreed that one of, the, one of the, the unique thing in Budapest is that I think it's only San Francisco where Hortonworks and Cloudera have uh, development centers in the same city, so they both have uh, uh, development in the same city. 
So Hortonverse came to Hungary by acquisition. We had a company called Sequence IQ, which was a company, which is a startup doing cloud break, which was basically you could fire up a Hadoop cluster uh, with Docker in, in, a, in the cloud. So you had a Docker-based Hadoop, as far as I understood. They, Hortonworks acquired uh, Sequence IQ, so now Hortonworks is at Budapest. They do CloudBreak, Emberry, and some H this the Horton the data platform. They, the development is in Budapest. It's also a regional center, so they're also expanding. Uh, everyone's hiring, but they are hiring also. And they are interesting because they are 100% open source, and they use really the latest tools. I am um, one of the organizers of the Go meetup at Budapest, which is you know Go language developed by Google. They are one of the most notable uh, Go users in, in Budapest. RapidMiner, uh, Zoltan can talk about a lot. He worked at RapidMiner. And, uh, and the rapid miner uh, came to Hungary also by acquisition. So there was a Hungarian startup called Redupe, which actually we had a um, there was a there's a company called DM Lab. You th you saw the logo on the training side. That's a that's a university spin-off company, uh, spin-off from the Technical University of Budapest, and they had two startups. One is Redoop, which was acquired by Rapid Miner, and the second one is Embrightly, where I was a founder. I worked at that company, so I was actually with, with the same office with them. So they came to Hungary um, by acquisition, and if you don't know what Rapid Miner is, uh, it's, the, it's one of the four uh, biggest data science platforms. It's, a, it's also on the web. This is the desktop application. You can get data in, you have operators like training and testing and stuff evaluation and it's a very good visual way for data scientists if you don't want to, to you know, program Python, RapidMiner is a very good tool for that. They are the market leaders, if I remember correctly, and uh, they have a web solution now. So they came to Hungary and now the whole big data competence for this data science platform is, at also is, is, Budapest, is in Budapest and 50% of the total uh, deployment. Nautical is an interesting example. I, I, I brought them to you because I think uh, I, I wrote my thesis on, uh, na on natural language processing, and they are an NLP, a natural language processing company. What they do is they, they analyze online media. So if a company, so if what they do is they analyze Facebook, Twitter, forums, uh, articles, and they give you almost in real time if you have some negative sentiment towards your brand, towards your, your campaign and stuff. And the other thing that is interesting is I think the first, one of the first companies in Budapest who went fully transparent, so the income, the revenue, the salaries inside the company is absolutely <coughs> transparent. And they have a very flat structure, like CEO, everyone else. And they are doing some, what's really nice is that they have very unique data sets, so basically a lot of social and other data from the last five years, and they are offering that to any academic research in, in Hungary, which is really, and they also like provide technical assistance for, for research, which is, an, which is, I think is a very, very good things, thing. Uh, my previous company, uh, Embrightly, which, uh, which is a slush winner company, and uh, what we did was, doing, well, what we still do, but not as a, a CEO role, is that in online advertisement you have a lot of fraud and, and, and it's hard to get a good measurement. And what we did is basically offer fraud detection, brand safety, uh, viewability for, for clients. And I don't want to talk a lot about it because it's, it's hard to talk about my own company, but... Another interesting company, they are called the next big hope for startups in Budapest is AI Motive. They are doing hardware and software components for autonomous cars. So their clients are Toyota and Volvo. They are providing, and they are working, one of the, <coughs> one of the big uh, partners of NVIDIA, the, the uh, manufacturer of video car GPUs, and they are doing software and hardware for autonomous cars. Their office is really interesting because sometimes you go and there is like a car without the driver going <laughs> in front of it like what so they are they are a big thing now in Budapest because they have a they just got a huge investment and uh, autonomous cars are just uh, I think it's really really exciting white pages I brought them because they are one of the cutting-edge ML companies if you know white pages they started as a data aggregation company but they moving, they're moving to AMA. So what they did before, a few years ago, is that 
you went to the website, you typed a name, and they just listed everything they aggregated for a person. In the States, in the United States, a lot of data is just public. So if you, if you get a fine on the highway because you drove just too fast, it's public record. Uh, and they aggregated that data. In Europe, it's different. I mean, we have just way stricter data protection uh, regulations, but in the States, they just don't have that. So, uh, but now they're moving to machine learning in, in Hungary. So uh, one of the lead data scientists is in, in Budapest, and I talked to him, and what they do now is transaction fraud detection, uh, which is a pretty different thing, but they offer it as a solution. So what they do is, you know, if you, if, uh, if I go to the dark web, I can buy a thousand bank accounts for or bank card numbers for like a hundred dollars. I can try them and someone will actually go to the bank and say, I, my, my card number is stolen, I didn't buy that. And especially in the States, to get a chargeback, it's really easy. You just go to the you know, uh, v bank website, say chargeback, and the bank gets back the money from the merchant, but maybe the merchant already shipped the you know, flat TV or the Xbox, so the merchant will lose money. So the merchants go to white pages and say, hey, before I ship this Xbox, can, can you check this, this, this user maybe? And then they're doing some transaction fraud detection and say, hey, don't ship the Xbox. This is a fraud transaction. So that's what they offer. And it's really interesting because uh, they're one of, the, one of the market leaders in fraud detection now. And they have multiple development teams at Budapest also. I brought Tenor because I actually talked to them. Tenor is, is the, one of the biggest telecommunication companies. Actually, I think A1 is a Tenor company. Uh, and I called them and then I was like, okay, big company, what do you do in data analytics? And I thought that they're doing reporting and stuff and they, they will tell me in a very nice way that. And I was, uh, I was really like, surprised how good projects they have. So they have really agile data teams, which means that they had a big data project that like, they, they, they scoped the whole project for three months. And after three months, they wanted to deliver positive ROE, return of investment. They delivered positive ROE after one month, which is in a company size Telenor, which has like, 20,000 employees, it's amazing. So they have really small data teams, very agile. They're doing real-time analytics now and focusing on user experience uh, focused analytics, which means before this uh, data project, they, they created new towers, you know, um, towers which do the whole coverage part by doing network analytics, which means professional people went, hey, so we have, don't have coverage here, this is a hill, this is really high, we should put a tower on top of the hill because then we have good coverage. And what they do now is they don't do that anymore. What they do is they analyze the, the user experience everywhere in the country and they say need a tower there because that's, that's a valley, we have really little new coverage, but we vastly improved the user experience for uh, the, the people living there. So the whole network uh, upgrade is based on user experience focused data analytics. The other thing is bandwidth problems. They told me a story which <laughs> I found is really, really, really amazing is that they realized that so, some people have old SIM cards and they don't get 4G connection. And some of the people actually already called uh, the support and the support said, hey, we have 4G coverage, you screwed something up on your, on your phone settings. And then we went to the other support and the phone setting was okay. So the support said, go to the network management, network management said, we have 4G coverage. And they analyzed a lot of data and they realized that all of these users have old SIM cards. So they sent out emails that, hey, change the SIM card. They already started to sending out new SIM cards even for, for people who are not even connecting the support. So they actually uh, had way less churn, churn of users. And this kind of uh, analytics is really amazing because it focuses on user experience. They're doing this in a very agile way. And when I talked to them, they actually learned a lot about from, from startups because they are also at the meetups. They're also at the conferences. And a lot of things that they do now, they, they got inspiration from, from smaller companies. And this is, I think, a prime example where big companies learn from smaller companies. I think the other part is still missing. So small companies and especially startups don't learn a lot enough from bigger companies. But, but I think we should do that more. Prezi, and I think I, ha I should have some animation here because now you c you're reading the slide. So Prezi is the Hungarian startup. This was one of the first startups, definitely the most successful one. And uh, we call them the Skype of Hungary. Or Skype is the Prezi of Lithuania, or Estonia, sorry. 
what the reason why Prezi is especially important is because they had an enormous impact on entrepreneurship and community in Hungary. Let me give you an example. The whole meetup scene was kicked off by Prezi at Budapest, and now we have more than six, uh, 600 meetups. What they did is that they did a failure conference, which was basically all about personal failures. And people went to the conference and they, they got to the stage and, and they said, hey, I, I screwed up a hundred times. And people who were sitting in the audience, they said, well, if Prezi failed a hundred times or that successful guy failed a hundred times, I can do that. And I saw a chart that after Prezi came to Hungary, the number of applications to incubators, so startups who are applying for incubator membership, is just skyrocketed. Because people actually went and say, hey, if Prezi can do, I can do. And they had really, uh, it's, it's hard, to, hard to state how much uh, it meant for Budapest that Prezi came over and the founders and the people um, uh, just yeah, had, the, had the community and showed us an example. But not just an example, they actually had active things. And they're also, yeah, having conf kicked off conferences and stuff. Now they have over 300 employees. Uh, they acquired a company in Riga called uh, Infogram a few months ago. And they have an office in, in Budapest now. I mean, they're a big company now. But, yeah, so it was. And also one of the founders that um, was from a university, which is also an important part. IBM, it's the, the, the important, I mean, I think why IBM is, is, is interesting to, to talk about is because it's also, it also came to Hungary by acquisition. So there's a Hungarian startup called Ustream that was not a very successful Hungarian startup, which, would, which did video streaming, and IBM bought the company. And now, the, you know the Watson at IBM? The, the, yeah, so Watson is basically everything now at IBM, which is not hardware. Watson was a research project and an AI project which won the Jeopardy. Jeopardy, I, I cannot pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I won't. I won't say it because I just cannot. <laughs> and you know, IBM kind of like said, okay, that's a good PR now, so we'll just rename everything to Watson. So they, so I, Ustream was both renamed to Watson, and now they do the whole uh, video capabilities of Watson. And, uh, and there's a typo. It's not Watson cloud capabilities. It's Watson video capabilities. But they're important because they are, the pri they are doing the, the cutting edge uh, neural network research at Budapest. So because of you know, the video use case, they are working neural networks. And uh, uh, the data, they, they are created this research teams, five people. And they are working on neural networks. Yeah. And we have, okay, so that's the last one, Balabit, which is an IT security company. The reason why I find them very interesting is that they are known for syslog engine. This is like the default logging log system in a lot of Linux distro. But now they move to behavior analy analyze, uh, analysis, and that's a very machine learning based use case. So what they do is that they analyze the, ac the behavior of the account. So when I, how you type, how fast you type, how you move your mouse, how you click, how much overshoot your mouse has. And they, they found if your account was taken over, because you know, the characteristics and the profile is just not the same as a day, a day before. So they, they are doing a lot of, um, and they, they're interesting because they do machine learning, but also there's a lot of data. So they are, they're using Spark to do machine learning. Most of the companies in Hungary actually don't have big data uh, kind of use case. So they're doing, you're using Pandas. Python is very popular now in Budapest. We have, I think I don't have a chart, but R, language R, that was, that was the number one uh, data analytics tool, and, and statisticians use that a lot. In physics, R was just overwhelmingly more, uh, more popular than Python. And now someone did, um, someone did some chart, I don't know, what, I think it was the, the number of uh, papers written use, using the uh, number of papers that uh, used R or Py, uh, Python, and Python just took over uh, in the last year, I think. But other companies also, G is one of the biggest employer uh, it, in uh, whole Hungary. BlackRock, the bank, the financial bank, they bought the data team to Hungary. They are trying to hire uh, 300 engineers and 150 data engineers, which, <laughs> good luck, but, but they came. Skyscanner, if you, who, who, use, who is using Skyscanner? The Skyscanner is in Hungary, and they also came by acquiring. It, they acquired a company called Distinction, <laughs> where I, 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 was, I, was, I was the fourth employee at that company, and Skyscanner acquired the company in 2014. And now the data t part of the data team, they have tribes, so it's hard to say team, because they have a special notion of basically a team. It's called a tribe. 
so the data tribe is, is also here. And Morris is, I think, an ocean company, if I remember correctly. And they are doing marketing. They're doing a marketing platform. They also came to Hungary. And Morgan and Stanley also have a, a huge ML and, and, and data team in, in Budapest. So you know, these are the projects, basically, what people are working on, because these are the companies that, that we have here in Hungary. But if you, um, a, a lot of big companies are, are here. And I think they, more will come. So, uh, and before I tell you that story, let me tell you about competitions because that's something we're also very proud of. So in Kaggle and other competitions, these are the competitions that Hungarian data scientists won or became very good. Now, just a few won, but I don't want to give you a good list. So Netflix Prize was win by one team and they created a company. And I think six years later, another Hungarian company won the Netflix Prize. Uh, Je uh, Global Energy Forecast Competition, uh, they have an um, abbreviation called JAFCOM. So JAFCOM was, two years ago, it was won by uh, the team working at the company where I was working at the time. And that was in 2014. and 2017, they became third. And this is a private uh, energy analytics company. It's a competition for energy, uh, energetic analytics. So uh, doing uh, predictions on energy usage, uh, uh, predicting the output of wind farms, and uh, yeah, and we are also Hungary. The, one of the universities in Hungary are working with Mexico and also with Denmark to to do uh, predictions of wind wind farm outputs. So you know how much energy the wind farm will produce and stuff, which is really interesting. And they told me the story that I don't know if you know that, but Austria has one of the biggest uh, energy uh, storages because you have some really nice mountains and it's uh, so basically what you do with energy storage is that you have water down in the valley and if you have extra energy extra electricity you pump up the water to the mountain and when you don't have enough electricity you just pull the plug the water comes down it uh, hits a uh, propeller and you, you basically generate energy and the problem with like Hungary we don't have mountains and uh, it's, 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 it's basically there's no way to store energy you have batteries but batteries are you know it's it's a hard to produce, expensive, uh, not good for the environment, which in Hungary we totally don't care about that. <laughs> it's still a problem. So, but also Germany don't have too many storages, but they have a lot of wind farms. So what they do is when they have a negative price in, in electricity, they basically give the energy to Austria and Austria stores it. And then we sell Yes, <laughs> yes, I heard them. I heard, so it's, it's actually an amazing thing that you, you basically, Germany pays you to get the energy from them, and then they pay you to get it back. So it's a <laughs> good business. But, but the reason why I'm telling you is that the energy, uh, the data analytics in, 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 in energetic in energy is, is really important because you know the problem with uh, renewable energies is that they don't have a stable uh, performance. So, like the reason why people love the uh, nuclear energy and coal is because that has a so-called line performance. So basically, you can just with a knob, and you cannot do that with wind and sun. So that gets more and more important. And the other competitions, yeah. But so what? What's what will happen in the future? And these are not just not mine. I would say it's not just my ideas, it's none of my ideas. So these are, these are kind of the patterns that I saw talking, about pe talking with people, what they see, what they expect in the next few years. Uh, we have a lot of projects which aims for girls, people in not that developed areas in Hungary, to try to get them into data analytics. And Jungle Girls is not a data analytical course, but our ladies is, and they are getting people outside of IT to get to data analytics. And I see more and more of that, not just for girls. Uh, digital transformation everywhere. That's, that's, that's something that will, I think, blow up in 2018. That's, that's actually what we see, also see. Big companies are now actually moving to, to do the digital transformation, which for some means automation, but for a lot of projects, it means data, data analytics. More training and education. What happened in, the, in, in, especially last year, is that big training companies move into data analytic training. So not just people like us who are, ex who, are, who are working in the industry, but training companies outside of data analytics and, and the industries, they moved here because they saw there is a potential here. And more nearshore companies and data startups. So near, nearshore is when a European or 
uh, and the company in the States don't ship the development to India, that's offshore, but to like Europe, which is kind of near shore. And the reason is because, because I think a lot of big companies came to Hungary and there is this perception that there is talent in Budapest. There's definitely talent, but there is definitely a pool of talent and that's finite and the problem is more and more companies are coming here. But also, the, still, the, the median uh, salary is way lower than in Austria and, and Germany. It's, it's rapidly going up. In the last three years, salaries doubled. So it went up by more than 100%. And uh, it's still going up, but it's still not as expensive as in, as in for instance, in, uh, in Denmark, in, definitely in, in the Nordics. But I think Austria is still way ahead in terms of um, level of uh, wages. An MR revolution, that's something that's, that's a big thing in, in Hungary now. If you see the number of uh, meetup membership, the new meetup memberships, there is a big, high, uh, big um, peak a few, a few years ago. Now it's again, people are going into data science meetup and big data meetup, and they are starting the, the whole new number of uh, subscriptions are going up. The challenges, so what we have in, 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 in Budapest, so labor shortage is a huge thing. So like, you know, I, as I mentioned, wages doubled. That's a, that's a big increase in, in, in salaries. And now uh, there is an official saying that we, we, the whole IT industry is 100,000 people, but there's a lot of people included in that. And the total number of missing people from the market is 20,000, which is a lot because the whole, in the whole, if you combine all the universities, everything, that's like 3,000 new people on the, on the market each year. And the, these 20,000 people who are missing is growing each year because new companies are coming in. BlackRock wants to hire 300. Nokia, I think they said, wanted to hire 600. There is another company, they told me, don't tell this, their name. They want to hire 1,000 people, 800 is, uh, engineers in the, last, in the next three years, which is, if you combine that, <laughs> just the math, the math it just doesn't end up. Business and tech communication, one of the biggest challenge now that this whole ML and data analytics is in, 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 the, in the mind of tech people and business people don't know that. And the result is that use cases are not discovered because business people think that this is totally doable. They go to the, go to the people who actually know, you know data analytics and ML and they say it's totally impossible. And there is this other case when they say, totally undoable and if they go, you know, would have go to the, to the tech guy, I would say it's totally doable now. One of the, one of the leaders of, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, director of a, a data analyst company told me that the problem is that we're just not getting the right use cases because people in companies don't think that it's doable but technology and definitely, you know, data analytics uh, uh, had a very fast pace in innovation. So a lot of things now is totally doable. Computational power increased, you know, to tenfold in the last few few years, which is which helps a lot with ML use cases. And still, we don't get the right use cases because in tech here, between you, you know, among your among yourself, it's totally you understand what's doable, what's realistic in data analytics. But people outside of this room, outside of, of data analytics, the community outside of the industry, they don't know. People at banks, people, that one of the areas is uh, ag government, they just don't know what's doable. What, and what, uh, what the challenge is, is to have to gap the communication. They have to, you have to uh, fill the communication gap between tech and business because that's how you get the use cases, that's how you get the new project, and that's how you get the finance, the funding to do these interesting projects in data analytics. And we also fight the deep data hype. So now everyone wants to do deep data. Every company has deep data research now. And it's, it's, it's interesting to see how we can lower the expectation but get up the actual research and how to get the expectations right because you know, if you don't get the expectations right, it's just hard, hard to keep up the interest and the funding for, for this, kind of, this kind of research. And the other thing is, which has, is I'm part of a project which aim to, to, go to, to go to people outside, totally outside of tech, bus drivers and people, to tell them what's coming because the pace of innovation is accelerating and people don't know what's ahead of us. And probably that's what I believe in VR, and it's true for Budapest, but it's also true for Vienna and for every other country. We are in an influx point and you know, if we don't handle the, the social consequences of automation and stuff, it will be a huge problem and <laughs> guess who will be the first one to blame? 
I'm not a data scientist, so I'm not, but. <laughs> so that's something that we're, we, we, we try to work on, is somehow, somehow get, the, the first problem is just to, to tell them what's, what's coming, to, to just make the awareness, uh, to raise the level of awareness. Um, we are DataPow. So thank you for, for listening, uh, listening to us. If, and if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer, but, but thank you for your attention. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, the, the languages. You, you, you said that Python surpassed R in the last year yep. and then so on, but you know probably also from, the, from this uh, Stack Overflow, Revis and all that stuff. Is, is there one language in particular that, that, that you think will, will gain um, more uh, ground? <coughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe Scala or Go. You mentioned Go, for example, but Go, I mean, as, as great as it is by design, it doesn't seem to be accepted by the data science uh, community. Yeah. Is there, is there something you can say about that? Yeah, I, I, I think data science community shouldn't accept Go because that's just not, that's not the right tool. I mean, Go is great for, for, for system programming, for, for common line applications and stuff. There's, there's now a very popular data science library for Go, and I just totally un don't understand why they do that. Because Go is a statically typed language, it's just not, it's, it, it's not interpreted, so it's always compiled, it's just not good for data science. Python, I think, I, I, started, Py I started to use Python when I got into, into data engineering and data analytics, and I think that's an amazing tool, and, and with, with notebooks, with you know, Zeppelin, Jupyter, and the other type. It's, I think it's a really good tool, and the Pandas Secret is amazing. Um, there is a guy from LA who, were, who led the data science meetup in LA, come, came back to Hungary, he's a Hungarian guy, and he's, uh, he, 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 you should really check, check, him, uh, check uh, out the GitHub page of the, of the guy, because he creates these benchmarks, and like, uh, Secret is actually beats all of the uh, implementations of, I think it was, act, it was I think, decision trees, but, but I think Python is, for me, uh, that's the whole language, the design is good for data science, and it, I think that's what I see in also uh, yeah, Stack Overflow or, or the conferences. Python is just skyrocketed. And how, how do you see the future of R? Uh, not well. I mean, <laughs> I mean R is still, neither, yeah, not, big, yeah, I mean, yeah, not well. I mean, in academia and in statistics, I think they have a good, but the problem with, you know, a language losing popularity is that the whole ecosystem shrinks, the number of problems solved on Stack Overflow shrinks. So if a, if a, if a, if a language can get over to the, to the first majority, it's just hard to stop because you have a lot of libraries, good libraries, a lot of know-how, a lot of conferences, a lot of people using it. And I think Python, I don't want to, <laughs> to state like things that are sure for the, for the future, but I'd say, I'd say that Python really won, won the game. But in five years, if R is going to come back, I totally don't think so. that. Have you heard actually anything there, or do you know use the Julia, for example? We had, we had, a, we had a beer night, and someone asked that, and no. I mean, every, there's, a few, there's a few people who tried it, okay. like at home. And no one, I don't, I don't know anyone who uses Julia. Because um, just, the, just stating the, the organizer of the Julia meetup is a member of the Rehan Data Science Group. He is a big proponent of, of Julia. Of Julia, that's why I'm interested. I don't know, but that was an interesting question. We're also interested in that, but okay. no. no? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you haven't mentioned blockchain. And what do you think about this development? And let's say about uh, intelligent uh, internet in the future? Intelligent internet? Yes. I don't or know what I mean. Or blockchain or uh, industry for You mentioned uh, social okay. impact. And the second question, I don't know. Yeah, so first industry four point, that's, I had a meeting a few weeks ago and we were totally agreeing that industry 4.0 will be, I think, a big thing. Uh, I mean, and everyone I, I meet and I, you know, we get into this conversation about digital transformation and industry 4.0, everyone's saying that uh, that's a big thing. Blockchain, I don't know. I don't truly really know the whole landscape. 
I know FinTech is also a, a big thing in Hungary because we have four incubators were launched in the last half year in, in from banks like almost all of the banks now have an incubator for FinTech and usually in FinTech there's some some blockchain based technology I mean probably it's a big thing the whole blockchain as an algorithm and as a structure I think is will survive I don't I'm not sure about the other Yeah, it was really interesting. I talked, I talked, I talked to one of the incubator, and <laughs> one guy, one guy told me that they really just embraced this new fintech scene because they had a hard time getting to to young people. And the other representative for a different bank, his, uh, bank, uh, he he told me that, well, at some point we just went with it. And he, so I think it's different for banks, but yeah, probably I, I'm. I don't think I'm in a position to do any predictions for the future. I think I have a personal. Yeah. If you, yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have companies in the fintech and in, in with blockchain technology. But the problem is that you know if you ask people who are who are believing the whole thing that they are going to say that if this will disrupt everything. If I talk to banks, they told me that it will disrupt maybe, but in 15 or 20 years. I mean, the problem and one of the banks. Bank representatives told me that you know it's 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 good that you have meetups. It's good that more and more people go. But the problem is that you have to convince the 70 years old to move to a new technology. You have to convince the the, compa the companies to use some new financial product, and that's a totally different thing than than delivering a good product. I mean, and and the whole financial sector is really conservative. Uh, what do you mean I don't know about them. I heard the thing. I heard that a few times, but I'm, I'm not in a position to. Because instant payment now is already, already done. Already yeah. Done. We, we you can, can make transfer in, in few seconds. Yeah. Through, through the euro. That's a good it's question. Already on the table. Yeah, we we can continue that, but there was another question. And but, but that's a good question. We can continue after. But uh, there is a question somewhere. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, then thank you again.